any other issues that come up read the paper anything else you have questions about what, what, what precipitates the ads on your election your, uh, uh, we are live sorry uh, <laughs> 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 so we, we are on right now Tom yes okay all right well there's the technical issues we'll come back we'll to that, question that later. Break, but, uh, <laughs> hello everybody welcome I'm, I'm Chris Cobbler editor and publisher of the Victoria Advocate this is our ethics board meeting uh, we meet uh, the first Tuesday of every month, almost every month, and um, we have uh, members of our uh, community and of our newspaper staff who are with us for these discussions. Um, I'll post a link later to this uh, video that, that is a column explaining what the Ethics Board is all about, so you can read more about it if you're interested in it. But the short version is this is just a way for us to have a sounding board, an advisory board, uh, about some of the tough issues we wrestle with every day and trying to be a community paper that's fair to all concerned uh, but does the important work of um, as outlined by the Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics that starts with speak truth and report it. That's a big old starting point for the conversation, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, but we'll go around the, around the uh, table real quickly, introduce ourselves, and we'll start into our discussion, which is about uh, the, the, the main item on the agenda is about this blog news post uh, in which an uh, editorial cartoon was posted that has offended some readers and we want to talk about talk about that talk about um, you know how blogging works and where uh, community newspapers role comes into that and what, what what should it be anyway so go ahead Harrison Harrison Stark with the second I'm from Jackson County Edmund. Mm -hmm. Joe Hermes from City of Edna Vic Morgan and Vic Tolga Pastor Andy Schreier from Edna James Martinez from Victoria. Ted McCain in Victoria. Uh, Emily Weaver in Orleo. Rick Aurora, Victoria. And behind? Uh, Tony Belandron, I'm um, Little Victoria. And Josh Shaw with Victoria. Thomas Martinez, Victoria. Can they see you back there, Tommy? No. <laughs> no, he's in the corner. Oh, thank you. I'm Becky Cooper, Living Yoko, Managing Editor of Advocate. Yeah, so as you see, um, we've got about Half, half of the folks are community members and half are newspaper staffers in, in some way. So we think that's a good mix because we think when you're talking about uh, ethical issues, it should be a mix of uh, newspaper and community because uh, we're trying every day to reflect the, the standards of our community as best we can while doing the work that journalists do. So, to, so just to summarize really quickly, uh, a reader, the way it works is readers can post blogs and comments to our website uh, without any prior review, they go up live. We do have uh, on our site posted sort of loose commenting rules, blogging rules, uh, things like transparency, you have to provide your name, uh, you have to keep it clean, not obscene, vulgar, rude, um, you shouldn't threaten anybody, you should be truthful, you should be nice, that's a big <coughs> word, um, not be post racist, sexist, or other types of things. Um, and um, we sort of <coughs> say the last thing we end with is don't be a troll. Don't post inflammatory, off-topic messages or personal attacks. So that's, those are all general guidelines that we try to encourage a constructive community conversation. What happened in this case is um, a reader who's got a regular blog on our site, and I want to emphasize anybody who wants to start a blog on our site can do that. We, we welcome that. Uh, he posted an editorial cartoon uh, that stirred up a lot of controversy nationally and in Canada. He's from Canada, uh, this cartoonist. Uh, it showed um, uh, that his representation of that photo that had been published in some places of the father and his daughter who drowned trying to cross the border in the river. And his cartoon um, shows uh, a president with a golf club saying, mind if I play through. So uh, understandably, uh, bothered quite a few people. Um, uh, it came to our attention sort of over the weekend that people started criticizing us for it and we're trying to educate people that well that's, we'll review it but that's that's his comments and he's totally responsible for it but in, it's interesting to me the difference is between how people see Facebook for example and how they see their local newspaper for better or worse, good or bad. Facebook, they, people post something on Facebook they don't like, they know it's that person's comment. They don't go to Facebook and complain about it very much. Or maybe they sign off Facebook. I don't know. But that same person posts, and in this case, it, it, he did do that. I asked this blogger where he got this cartoon, and he said he pulled it off Facebook and put it on our website. So it was
was on Facebook somewhere. It's like just cartoons uh, all over. I think that cartoonist too was fired from yeah. the publication. I saw a post. His, his contract was not renewed. Yeah, that's that's in that story I sent out okay. about it. Um, um, but so, but the, to finish that thought, they put the same thing is posted to our website, and people don't blame him so much as they blame the newspaper for allowing it. And some people get confused right away that we published it. It never appeared on the newspaper. It, 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 we, we wouldn't have printed that in our paper. <coughs> um, but the question now for the ethics board is, hey, you know, how do we educate people about the distinction? And B, uh, where should we remove this cartoon? You know, is it, is it beyond the community standard? Uh, of, and, uh, and the blogging rules and commenting rules that we post to our website. So Do we have someone that monitors that to be sure that it gets its entire guideline? Yeah, we do. I mean, <laughs> our editors and, and okay. Tom, as our digital editor, back in the corner, does that. So, and we again, so we look at everything, uh, these rules, and based on what people post. But it's a, you know, it's not a black and white issue at any time. Like the reader commenting on this blog, complaining about it. Um, levied what I consider a personal attack against the guy who blogs. So and, and, and our instinct as journalists is to let people have their say, let them say what they want to say, but but when they cross that line and we moderate and remove we remove a comment or anything that they we think is over the line, then we get criticized for, you know, censoring their free speech, all that sort of thing. So that's that's the tussle we have that and that's been around when you try to moderate people's online comments for as long as we've been doing that as a newspaper, which is, uh, you know, newspapers have been doing that one way or another for 15 years or so. It's a, it's a tough one when you try to do that. Facebook just throws up their hands at it mainly. But <laughs> Can I ask a question about sure. the whole blogging aspect of your website? Sure. Um, because that is a little bit different than journalism, yeah, for per a se, a lot different. And so is this something common that newspapers do? And is it along the lines of, you know your editorial sections in your newspaper. Was that a, is there an outflow of that? Yeah, it's is, a, is that what it that's was that what it's supposed to be? Yeah, it's a it's a way for people to, another way for people to express their views, and much the way that our viewpoints page is a way for people to express their views. Um, we were just talking before we came on the camera in front of the media about a letter to the editor, which is similar. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a letter to the editor is not journalism; it's a, it's a person's opinion, but we want. We want to encourage people to have opinions about the news and talk about the news and think about the news, and so this is sort of the the digital way to do the same thing. Uh, although the difference is, the letter to the editor we do put into the paper. We do call the letter writer. Uh, we verify with them. We do if there's something that's completely factually wrong, we will reject the letter and say, well, you need to cite your source or that's wrong. But if it's just an opinion. We we'll generally allow it. It's an opinion, even if, and even definitely, especially if it's an opinion we don't agree with. We let letter writers publish opinions we don't agree with all the time. We do that routinely. We don't we don't have a standard that they have to offer an opinion that we <laughs> that we stamp with approval. We don't want, we don't want to be in that game. We want people to to offer their opinions, whatever. And I think that the marketplace of ideas helps people decide, you know, the best course of action in a democracy. Yeah, the, his first first part of his question was, <coughs> do other newspapers routinely yeah. do this? Do and they provide yeah. a blog Sorry, on their website? And they do, yeah. Readers, um, other newspapers routinely do allow commenting in some way, shape, or form or reader blogs, which actually people are, are always confuse the difference. They're, they aren't that different of commenting versus a blog, but yeah, newspapers routinely do that. But to that then, is that it sounds like there is a little bit of a difference though between <coughs> your guidelines and rules for your ed letters, to letters to the editor and your editorials, people that write editorials, and your blog. And my question is, do you really want that? Why would there be a difference? Is do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's that's where this is coming from. Because you let anybody put pretty, pretty much anything they want on the blog, yeah. but on, on the letters to the editor and editorials, you do have a little bit more stringent guidelines. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. Well, the, the reason why newspapers in general have done that is um, a the courts have allowed it. <laughs> that, that goes back to like the 1995 Telecommunications Act that has held that the people publishing themselves online, and that includes commenting or blogging, they're responsible solely for their comments. And the publication that, or, or website or platform that happens to be hosting it is not responsible mm -hmm. for that. So that's, that's a big difference. That's, that's how 
faceless, as you said, honestly, a faceless. If we didn't have that protection, people, it would, it would be hit with lawsuits all the time. Um, so that's, that's one. The other one is just if you're going to allow commenting in an online, immediate, 24-7 world, you pretty much have to allow them to comment. There's, you know, a newspaper, a printed newspaper every day is a somewhat slower, more deliberate process. We have the time to check out a letter to the editor. Uh, if we were to do this, follow the same process with a letter to the editor that we do with commenting, it would basically be stopping commenting. And some, and some publications have taken that choice and decided to just stop commenting altogether because it does open up a lot of problems, a lot of can of worms. And, and more and more in recent years, some publications have said no more commenting. Well, and especially with some uh, quitting their printing and, yeah. and all of online publications. <coughs> Although the ones online usually allow the commenting. I mean, it's they the, get it's the, the comments. Yeah, right. they want the comments. I mean, so you, you know, to me, the reasons why I think commenting is important is because you do want that engagement. You do want people to, to, to responsibly and constructively comment on the news. The letters, that's why we have letters to the editor. Although, certainly, we've always had people who see letters to the editor and get confused, thinking, again, somehow we're endorsing those and we're not. We're just allowing people the, the forum to talk about what well, they want. Isn't there a difference between commenting on things and having a blog and being there? Um, there there's a difference. I mean, the, just that a blog is longer. It's sort of like a letter to the editor, in a way. Um, that's, the, that's the difference. But, but comments can be long, too. They can be longer some blog posts. So there's, not, there's a very subtle difference. It's a very subtle difference. Stories and... Tom, you want to explain that more from a digital editor perspective? Let me just make a couple points first. Yeah. Um, so we moved our commenting system off of Facebook, where almost anybody could comment on our stuff, into our uh, into our back end system, which means you have to actually be a subscriber now to to comment. To comment. So yeah. we really did limit that. Yeah. And two, almost all of our bloggers have been vetted in one way or another. They're just not random people. We don't. We. They're just not random people who say, I want to blog and start blogging. So we know pretty much all of our bloggers across the board. But well, we, we allow them all on. We haven't, we haven't turned anybody away as a blogger. No, but the ones that we do have now are pretty consistent, have been pretty consistent over the years still. So. Yeah. All those one questions are relatively new ones. So we moved here a few years ago, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned that you reached out to this person. Yeah. It, it, what, did you ask them why they felt the need to take that cartoon? And yeah, well, I'm, I was—I wasn't really asking him about his um, political beliefs because he blogs regularly enough that I know what his <laughs> sure. political beliefs are. But, but why? So. That, I mean, why, <laughs> but I mean, something that is pretty significant. So yeah. why? Why would he pick this one to put? He thought, yeah, he he thought it was—he right. thought it was powerful. He agreed with it. Yeah. I mean, that's—that was it. Um, there's a side issue on this that—that that is really not an ethics issues per se, but it's one that may settle this question and, and avoid it altogether. As I asked him, I said, what I reached out to him about was said, do you have copyright permission for this cartoon? You know, it's not our cartoon. You posted it to our website. And he said, it went viral. It's posted everywhere. Why Why do I need that? But I'll reach, he said, I'll reach out to this cartoonist and see if he's okay with it. But see, that's the kind of, this is this kind of strange territory to get in with. I mean, it is, if you look anywhere on the internet, you'll find this cartoon. But but as a newspaper, we're responsible for that, and we don't want copyright violation on our website. So it may, we may end up having to remove it for that. But I really want to have the discussion about blogging more than the copyright issue. Yeah, I think there's a difference too between yeah. a picture, yeah. which is much more dramatic than an yeah. article. Yeah. I mean, if you're right, if you wrote this in an yeah. article, people wouldn't react. I don't think no, no. to the extent they Not are nearly. seeing a picture like this. Not they have to read it. Yeah, they have to read. <laughs> Go ahead, Andy. No, I just got a curiosity. You said you wouldn't, you wouldn't run that, yeah. that um, comic in your or the the cartoon in yeah. your in the paper. And I was just curious. Um, not that I'm saying I yeah. support it or anything, but what is it that that would that would make that cartoon yeah. over the line? Yeah, that's a, that's a good that's a good point. And and it, and and to your point about images, they are much more powerful. Which is I'm glad why Emory is uh, as our chief photographer of the new member of the ethics board because it's, it's a lot of times over my career it's images that get people really riled up whether those are photos or editorial cartoons they're so powerful they hit you in the gut right they hit you very you can't you have to read and think about pictures of, of wreck yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and so and so we did, and that news photo was out there. We didn't publish that photo either. Um, and I think the photo and the cartoon, much the same way, you know, we're thinking about what the community standards are to such an image and how the community would react to that image. And I think our <coughs> Our thought process, and we didn't even have a full conversation about that. This cartoon is not available in our syndicated service, so we wouldn't. Have, so we didn't have the option to choose it and have that discussion before it. But we did have that picture. Well, option. we did have that picture, yeah. and and um, <coughs> the discussion, and that's that's a fair one for any news judgment question. Is you know where do you draw the line on on photos that are you think are going to uh, basically have more create more negative reaction than positive contribution? Right? That's that's where you're always kind of figuring out where that line is exactly. And I certainly have seen people make the argument that this photo itself, the photo of the, the father and daughter, was so powerful that it should publish everywhere, that it's an important statement. I mean, it, and certainly people would make that argument that it should and did. I mean, many publications did publish it. And I, I imagine there would be some nominated for a Pulitzer. I would guess. Yeah, I would say the editorial cartoonist did his job. I mean, he's, he's supposed to invoke a uh, reaction. He's supposed to invoke um, a reaction to his image. And that's the thing. I'm not saying I agree with yeah, the image right. or anything like that. I'm a pastor. It's graphic, and it's, I don't, you know, but the, but the, but the, isn't that what, I mean, it's it should I be, I mean, what, what brought, made this one over the line, I guess, is what yeah. made, made it so controversial that he said he was for, he, he wasn't, re his contract wasn't right. renewed. And I could see people responding to this blog because they don't agree with, the, the point that they're making and stuff like that, but in and of itself, I understand the image is graphic. Is yeah. that what is the part that is offensive about them? Because I mean, yeah, it's saying something pretty offensive about the president, but yeah. I mean, that was the whole point. I mean, it's a political that's cartoon. They're, they're usually that way, aren't they? I mean, yeah, yeah. and that's where I wonder. I saw it, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of poor taste. But I was, I, but my, my thinking was, that's within the genre. I mean, within the and then well, what political cartoons do. That's certainly in the. Right, and that's why I was wondering why this one was so far over the line for, for people. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good discussion for the community members here. Uh, the, the, one of the other regular bloggers on our site who's uh, also left-wing, he posted back and just said it's, it's too tasteless. I mean, I mean he, he, he didn't okay, so that's it, so it's uh, tasteless. Mm -hmm. So it's tasteless. And that's, and that's what I think, too. But yeah. I mean, yeah. The only thing is now, uh, politics have gotten so ugly, and you have to ask yourself how low can you possibly have it? Right. Well, I think that we've all seen some pretty low situations. And uh, uh, I really think, I believe that the newspapers should, should have the choices they have. But on something like this, I think that there should be some control stated about what shows up there. Right. Because when it shows up, it shows up on your name. Right. Right. And that's something that can hurt you a lot more than it can possibly ever help you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that there should be some minimum uh, that that or some maximum, it right. depends on your side here, but this has, this is all politics, that's all it is. Right. And, and uh, politics, I think, for all of us, have gotten so out of hand. There is no more ethics, mm -hmm. truth, or, stability. or anything stability. else. Stability. Yeah. And somebody at some juncture has to say, that's it. We will not post something that is that, I hate to use the word hurtful, but, but it is. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that shouldn't have ever shown up. At least mm -hmm. that's what I think. I know, I'm sure the family of the, the, the man and that child are equally hurt by people who also are avid Trump supporters I agree with what you're saying, and I think I think both Republicans and Democrats have both called for <coughs> a ceasefire <coughs> on how low we can go play a uh, game. <coughs> the one thing that um, uh, I was thinking about.
about is if we make it mandatory for our, to post a disclaimer on our bloggers. Yeah. I don't know if you ever run a movie, and, and you know there's special features on a movie. Mm -hmm. All the time it says the views expressed yeah. by any interviews in the special features is not the same as the movie company or uh, the manufacturer of the disc or whatever. And I'm just thinking we should have a above. standard disclaimer above every blog, above above the blog, uh, if they're going to post on our site. But we, the other side of this, mm -hmm. once it's out there, yeah, they're not going to say who's you know that it is. It's on your right. site. Right. There's where the, the real knock is. But I think there's a slippery slope there. There is one. I I'm not arguing that. Yeah, yeah. Very slippery. And it's, and it's one to to navigate. It's a, it's a difficult one to navigate. Well, but that subject I was speaking of, but that is not really news. But it's somebody's opinion. It's an opinion. Right. But it's not news. Right. Mm -hmm. The photo itself is the actual photo, oh, yeah, but yeah. not the cartoon. So you right. have to ask yourself, what go what good comes from the cartoon? There is good that will come uh, that will come from the photo. Right. It's, tra it's sure tragic. That. It's a terrible situation, but mm -hmm. hopefully there will be some good that comes from that. From people seeing, you know, what what people go through to get here. And I'm sure that there. But. And I'm glad I haven't seen it, but I'm sure there are memes out there too that are very insulting about the, the death of this man. Oh, and it's, uh, it's disgusting, yeah. And it's just, just recently, ProPublica wrote a story about the Facebook pages yeah. of a lot of Border Patrol, and one Border Patrol commented, they, according to their reporting, is that the bodies were too clean, so they were staged. That actually somebody planted those bodies there and took the picture. That, that was one comment on the <coughs> Facebook page that ProPublica reported on. Right. Yeah, remember, we didn't go to the moon either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we did go to Mars, yeah. and the government's keeping it secret. Now, to that, though, I, I, I think there, is, there would be some wisdom yeah. in making that very... See, the, 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 the thing we need yeah. to distinguish is, just like you said, the picture's news, and the, but the cartoon isn't. But the cartoon is an editorial on the news, and right. and newspapers traditionally okay. have have offered editorials on the news, where people are allowed to express their opinions and so forth. Right. And the blog is an extension of that, as far as right. I understand. Yes. Now, the, but well, in the newspaper, you often try to make it very clear so people don't get it. No, not everybody's going to get it. No matter what you do, right. people aren't going to get it. But make that clear that these are not the express views of the of the newspaper. I think with the blog, especially because it gets shared and only, you know, like the blog post, you do want to have that very clear and prominent. I think there's wisdom in right. having that every time. I know it's yeah. it's, it's repetitious and yeah. it's it's but yeah. but it's but it may make sense. We we didn't move up our disclaimer if on the list of blogs. We did that yeah. after this happened to make it clear to people that it's there. But maybe on every post on every do I that think you should in some I way. I think that's a good suggestion. Um, but to, to I think that's a very good suggestion point, but to Joe's point, um, we do have a line. We have a line. We list our rules, but where does this cartoon violate those rules? Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking at those rules. Yeah. Didn't you say inflammatory yeah. or opposed to inflammatory? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, say that, that's what I yeah. This would not be, I wouldn't consider this informational. Yeah. Now the picture would be, right. yeah. but, but this, there wasn't any information they were giving. And that's what the an opinion, but an inflammatory opinion. Exactly. An inflammatory opinion. But it's funny if you actually read what he wrote. What he wrote is actually probably even more inflammatory. I mean, see if you read, I, I read a few of his. Yeah. I mean, it it's because it's visual pictures. Just do something right. different. But I mean, it's he speaks very strongly. Let's just yes, put he that. Did. And and and, <laughs> you know, and, and an ang very angrily about. Right. Of many issues, and, and that's I mean that's that civility that has been lost and everything, but that's where you know I almost think well okay if you're gonna say something about that about the picture, yeah. I mean are, are you gonna have where is the line? Where's that line of inflammatory? Uh, right? Inflammatory that's when they're yeah. speaking they're, and, they're, and they're listing all these people that they hate and that they're that they're evil and so forth, yeah. which is I mean in my opinion over the line about anybody you disagree yeah. with, yeah. Unless, you know unless we're talking about you know Hitler or something right. like that, and, you know you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I guess. It's not much different than the situation that arose uh, with the, the Danish cartoonist. Yeah. 
the cartoons of Mohammed. I mean, mm -hmm. here's a whole world that was yeah. absolutely inflamed by that. It doesn't much matter what you do or say. Right. You're going to inflame somebody. And the person that you inflame is the one that's responsible for Very the crap good. that they put out after they start that. Right. Because, right. you know, I, I can read all sorts of things and right. get upset because they just aren't factual or aren't true. Right. But I don't go out and threaten to cancel my subscription because you publish it editorial by Walter Williams that I disagree with. Right. <coughs> some of this stuff's good, some of it's bad. Some of it makes right. me mad. Oh my God. But right. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's one of the people are going to get inflamed. Right. And some will just absolutely overreact. Yeah. And you can't do much about that. And, that's, that's and the, the problem with our society mm -hmm. is that that's become the norm instead of the exception. It used to be rare that people would really yeah. get that angry and express that anger I mean, even the kids in school do it. Yeah. Put yeah. your Bible away. No, I'm not going to. You, you're violating my rights. And the challenge just, is, once it starts, where should it stop? Right. And you have to have some spot that it stops. Yeah, and the hard part for a newspaper, again, that makes it so difficult for us, is, is deciding what's inflammatory. What is what opinion is not acceptable? Um, some things are easy, obvious, like some some racist slur, right? That's easy. Okay, we're not going to do that. But but when you get to someone just expressing very vehement comments, comments to your point, Andy, about about anybody saying they're evil uh, or bad or horrible, um, misogynistic, sadistic, you right. know, all the different adjectives yeah, they yeah. use. That's pretty inflammatory yeah. speech if you think about it. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Holocaust didn't exist. Did you know what letter is or something like that? Yeah, that was a while back. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, that had a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that had a lot. Yeah, the Holocaust denier in the paper? I don't remember that. Or somebody who, uh, or the, on the, block? the point no. of uh, World War II or the Holocaust. Or, or, or maybe it was the Civil War. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's a bit of a bit of uh, that's a bit. I don't, I don't remember that, so we'll stick to what I remember. <laughs> well, there are people out there who don't who believe that the Holocaust. Yeah, but, but the Holocaust is the Nile map recently in the last month. In our paper? Yeah. No, no, no. It, uh, uh, but I don't remember right. the exact spot, but it was some yeah, there, person saying yeah. that was all. There was a, tri there, there was a famous trial in England yeah. uh, over that, too. There's no movies in there. Well, I would I would say you know to yeah. for your practical right. purposes as a newspaper, right. um, it's good to have these discussions. But you guys, I mean, you've got you've got your right. guidelines set up. I think the only choices you have are to or to stop it. I mean, you just stop it and then you avoid all that because you're not opening yeah. yourself up to this because you're saying we're not going to have that for format of editorializing, right. or you're going to set up your your rules. Make it very clear. I think the one thing that would be good is on every post, everything they do, yeah. have that disclaimer. Right. That you're responsible. For yeah, your own and, and then point people to that, and then just understand. You said about Facebook earlier. You know, people, people. You know, I don't know how people respond on Facebook. You understand? People posting inflammatory things on Facebook, and all of a sudden, and all the comments are just back and forth. People right. get mad. People yell them for for right. putting it up there. Or this. And so, um, your comments. Yeah. Just understand you're going to get those right. because that's the world we live. It's just like Facebook. That right. I mean, it, it yeah. is, and so yeah. You know, I mean, part of it you just got to live with the fact yeah. that people are going to get upset because it's people are people don't agree, and our world doesn't agree <laughs> disagree civilly anymore. Uh, so yeah. you're going to have people complain. But as long as you put the disclaimers up, yeah. I think you're do, okay. Do you think technically, Tom, we could get even a one sentence disclaimer at the top of every post that says, you know, the blogger is responsible for his or her own comments? Not think. automatically. I don't think it would show up in every post somehow. No, you would have to manually do that on every post. Yeah. I would you think you could just. You don't have a template that people post to. You don't have a template that they post to. Yeah. No. Not, not with text already into it. Um, yeah. I think you could probably get that. Well, we can work on that. I think you could do something. We do something. We do at the top of all the list of blogs that says that. There, but each post, I think it's the thing yeah, would be yeah, better. Yeah, it'd be awfully hard. Nobody's going to read the top. They're, yeah. they're reading down here. And, and I'm sure you, you can always just point people to that. Then you every click time. right into <coughs> a blog, is why if you don't have a disclaimer on it, you wouldn't necessarily see it. Or you could do this. 
you could require those who, who blog because they, they post their own blog, correct? Yeah, they, right. they, they post, yeah. that, that, that'd be a requirement that, yeah. you, that you say, if you're gonna blog to our post, what we want this snippet <coughs> yeah. at the beginning, somewhere at the beginning of the post, right. be, um, because it saves us from a lot of grief and just make that a requirement. I mean, then you don't have to, then it's not more work for Tom or anybody else, but right. then you, that, that's expectation. And, and if they don't do that, then. Well, back, back to this particular cartoon, I created, <coughs> excuse me, the disclaimer should be there. And we'll figure out how to do that, but this one, is it compared to everything else you've seen on commenting on our blog, would it, is this too inflammatory? Would you take it down? That's an interesting, I'm a pastor. For yeah, yeah, I, and, I, <laughs> and I look at that, and <laughs> looking at general political cartoons, yeah. I mean, it's an editorial, I mean, they're meant to be inflammatory, right. and, and part of it is in, inflammatory cells, but they're, and so it really didn't, yeah. to me, seem worse than other things I've seen. It did not come across as crossing the line. I thought, oh, that's gonna get a lot of people upset, yeah. and I, my personal opinion, that's tasteless, but yeah. most political cartoons, I'm, in my opinion, are that. And so if you're running if you're running them, I mean, they're meant to be that way. They're meant to make a point. It's, hyper, it's hyperbolic. It's right, supposed right. to be, right. um, show something ridiculous to show, make a point. And so, no, I, now I'm going to be on video saying but I did, not, I did not find that different or cro um, more inflammatory than other things I've seen or heard. Now, but that goes back to, again, you know, what you guys decide in your local family-owned newspaper, right. what you would consider, what you want to put out there. Because you're not out to just sell papers and be inflammatory. That's yeah, not the Victoria Avenue. It doesn't sell any papers. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Do, it, it, it does promote <laughs> more comments online, which is also we decry the loss of civility in our society. It it, it it frustrates me to no end that the sort of topics that I think ought to prov provoke a lot of discussion, interesting sort of thoughtful discussion, is quiet a lot, a lot of those. But then something that's inflammatory, suddenly there are more comments on this blog and related yeah. blogs mm -hmm. than, than on anything else. That's but that's how society works. We just. We live in it. We we try to do our best to shape it toward the direction we want to go, but we we are we are products of our society too. Anyway, were you gonna say something, Greg? Oh, yeah. I just said spend a little time with Dudesbury if you want. <laughs> 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 if you want to really understand we don't have political cartoons. No. <laughs> we, we, didn't they have the easy carry Dudesbury years ago? <laughs> yeah, years ago. This yeah. is one of my favorites. But yeah. Long, 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 time. long time before me, so long before long that, but long many years ago. But but to your point, Andy, I mean, political cartoons are meant to be thought provoking. Some are more inflammatory than others, more <laughs> than others, and this is definitely in the category. But where you find that's the hard part. Where is that Where's line? Yeah. Where is that line? Yeah. yeah. And well, you know, we we sit here saying we that we have to choose the spot that it is and yeah. it's not. You know, when you get that down to it, you gotta use common sense. Yeah. You know, if sometimes that's often hard. It's, to not, do. it's not so common it's anymore. It's not so common anymore. Technically <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Edna where there's still some common sense. Sometimes it gets a little out of hand. But you know, you do have to to know that when that shows up, it's going to stir stuff up. Oh, yeah. And I don't think that it's the purpose to have things stirred up. Yeah. I think that, that anything that this newspaper puts out should be something that is new. That's why it's called that. What that was, was not new. Well, we do allow opinions. I just want to make that point. We do but allow opinions, reader opinions. It's not news, well, for sure. It's not. Well, no. Yeah. But, but what's more, maybe I'm just from yeah. the old school. If it's got your newspaper name on it, they think it's news, and they think it's right. Well, that's, that's, that's what it's obvious. Yeah. That relates to the, and it's a very related point, but on our viewpoints page, we have letters to the editor, we have guest columns, uh, we have editorial cartoons too, not this one, but we have editorial cartoons. And on all of those, we try to label them as from others, That's other right. people's opinions. But they're opinions nonetheless, and they are in our paper, so if people disagree with those opinions, to your point, they may say, well, that's the advocate <coughs> endorsing those but opinions. But they understand that, that it's not necessarily you, yeah. because that's, you know, part of it. Mm -hmm. But if it's on something that, that just any Sandy Smith can go type on, uh, you may end up with some, some, you know, some things on there that are just totally out of it. And you have to have some, some in-house power showing, yeah. well, but I'm not 
necessarily showing, but being able to control what is on there. He can show. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Yeah, and there has to be some control. I agree what, with you on that. What advantage to y'all does the newspaper get out of having the blogging? Good uh, to having blogging and commenting, which I put in the same bucket, it's it, to me it's the same as what advantage we get out of having letters to the editor. We're we're giving people a forum to discuss the news and their thoughts on what's going on in the world today. Right. That, that's the advantage. That's the advantage that we want people. And I think it's better that they come and talk about the news at a news site where there's actually vetted journalism, verifiable information. So at least they're that starting point of the conversation, as opposed to having this conversation, like we were talking at last month's meeting, in the social media world, where there's they're not even they're not even in the ballpark of facts a lot of times. And so I I hope that by having this conversation in a newspaper or on a news website that it's a more constructive community conversation. That's that's the goal. That's the goal, that the people who read the paper and are informed are gonna have more thoughtful comments. I mean, that's my idealistic view of it, that they will then be, <laughs> and it may be idealistic, but that they will be, you know, it'll be a better conversation. And, and I want people, we want people to have a conversation about the news. We want them to be engaged, that's a buzzword in, in these worlds. We want them to be engaged to really care one way or the other, because. And, and, the, and the biggest way we care, we show we care, is by voicing our opinion about things. And then you're, you're, you're bought in, you're totally, fully, you've thought through the news you've read, and you offer an opinion about it. Uh, that's, that's what the advantage we get. That's, and, uh, but we don't, we're doing that, we can't, certainly can't control how people express those views. And actually, I, I always feel like it's, I feel like with, it's a great news story. We've written a news story that's really well reported, really thoughtful, and two different people come at it with totally different opinions about that same subject. I think that's that's a wonderful news story if you can get that accomplished. Are they, are they doing that on the blog or at the, with the, at the end of the article? Or they can do either. They can comment on the article okay. itself or they can create a blog post about an article. That's well, and I guess my question would be, of all the blogs, because I don't yeah. read the yeah. blog, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Percentage of all these, if we have this many, how many do you feel like are constructive or in the in the realm of what you're hoping for? In uh, the idealistic. Well, I don't, yeah, it's 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 definitely idealistic. I mean, you can add, I don't know. I don't know how to put a figure on that. What do you think? Because <laughs> if it's only this amount that's yeah. a positive, then <laughs> what 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 people want to express these opinions too. The other thing I'd say, if we just cut it off, they're going to still express opinions just elsewhere. And, and we are not even, and we just say we're not even in that game. And maybe that's what Emperor Publications has decided that, that we're just not there. That you just go express your opinion somewhere else, and we don't want to hear it. Uh, I personally don't think that's the way to go, but we could do that. When, um, I know we have two Facebook pages one for the news and one for the editorial board. Yeah. Why can't can we, are, are we able to create an entire website just with the opinions and viewpoints and blogging? Separate from our news site. Well, that gets pretty complicated. Mm -hmm. But if you do yeah, that, you've moment. got no control. Yeah. No, no, we would control both websites. How? Well, we have Avosport and we have news. Well, those are just, Avosport is just a section on our site, just like opinion is a section on our site, blogging is a section on our site. They are distinct, actually, yeah. but. Uh, if you're <laughs> to, well, to that I don't. I'm not sure if that would be the solution. Yeah. But I mean, that's, I'm glad you're thinking, trying yeah. to think of what. Right. Right. But I want to open up another can of worms. Not that we discuss this right now, yeah. but that this is tied with it. But that goes along with you know the, the newspaper making a distinction between what is the news and what is opinion editorializing right. and so forth. Um, you have a whole section every Saturday yeah. for which I know one of the writers that writes for your religion section. Yeah. Right. Which, if you look at, at, in the religion section, you yeah. have um, news stories about things that are happening in churches and right. in spiritual right. organizations. But then you also have certain columnists yeah. who write devotions, yeah. which are basically an editorial opi opinion. opinion. I mean, that's opinion. And it's not reporting the news. Right. And But it's, it's, it's put in the paper, and, and that's accepted. But then what happens when you get somebody whose religious beliefs... Are contrary to are, the are, 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 yeah, are, are contrary to the standards of the newspaper or of the community itself. 
<laughs> I mean, you never you haven't had that problem because the people you have write tend yeah. to write for the, com the the public you have. But right, but I mean, that's the same. It's, it's the same. same it's the same issue. You're, yeah. you're right. And that's, and in in the paper, there are columns, opinion <laughs> columns, that appear on newspapers like the face section, and mm -hmm. and we hope that most readers understand the distinction that we're making by we label them with the, the author's photo and we have a little tagline at the bottom to say who they are. But but yeah, every time we think everybody knows the, the rules of the game, invariably at some point somebody somebody comes along and says, no, what are you doing? You're you're endorsing this this columnist. No, we're giving them a platform to speak. But that, that definitely is a related point. And in and, and the old days of newspapers, back in before 1900, um, newspapers used to, it's an interesting history lesson from my American <laughs> history of American journalism, used to just put the news and opinion all together. In the 1800s, there it was all together. 1700s, when our forefathers started the first amendment, it was just all together. There was no distinction between opinion and news. And That's why you bought a paper. Yeah, you just wanted it. It was lively. I mean, they were very partisan of the papers in the forefathers' time. They were always taking a stand on the candidate. They were just all it was, it was Propaganda. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it, it, that's what it was. And then, and then uh, Horst Greeley came along, and their newspapers started to become more respectable, and they created an uh, opinion page and started saying, oh, we're not going to put all this opinion in the news stories anymore. We're going to put it on the opinion page or viewpoints page in the case of the Advocate. And that, that, you know, sort of, that and many other things led to sort of the rise of the golden age of newspapers, that newspapers wanted to become more respectable. And, uh, and they did during the 1900s until the point where everybody read a newspaper and it was accepted sort of format. But what's happened in the digital age since then is it sort of turned that all upside down on its head too, that everybody can be a publisher, everybody can get their comments out there in some way. So as a newspaper, as the gatekeeper of all this is not really the way it used to be at all, that everybody has a form. It's the only question of how much we want that everybody's views on our website and how we control that in that case. And can we control that in any real meaningful way? Um, Ray, you want to add anything? You've been soaking this all in. I'm just soaking it all in. <laughs> uh, well, we're, com and we're coming up to our hour, so we probably should wrap this up. Um, but what would be helpful to me uh, would be just even, because to, to wrap this up for our viewing audience too, Ethics Board is an advisory board. Ultimately, the buck stops here and with our family owners. We have to decide what's best for our newspaper, but it's important for us to, to have a cross-section of the community offering thoughts on what we should do. So after you watch this, I uh, hope you'll post comments to uh, this video on the Facebook page or to our website or give me a call in the newsroom and talk about it because we'll decide after this what we want to do with this particular particular blog, but what helped me is it just to show a hands from everybody on the ethics board whether we should uh, take this this particular post down based on it being too inflammatory. So who, who, would, who would say take it down? Anybody comfortable with that vote? I'm raising my hand for both. I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so not decided. I couldn't tell you. So anyway, I, I, that's, you see what I'm saying? That's, a, that's pretty close to a split vote. Pretty close. And uh, twice. Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> and and, and anyway, <laughs> twice. <laughs> I do that with most elections, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> you vote twice? <laughs> oh, does that? Does that? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have Jackson County. Uh, all right, well, well, we'll wrap it up, Tom. Thanks, everybody. This is our ethics board. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. And again, uh, if you want to offer your opinions about it, you can post to this video, to the blog itself, as long as it's up, <laughs> and or to the blog Tom wrote about this blog. There's two <laughs> posts about it, so that you probably could post there. That that blog post Tom wrote is not going to go away, so you can definitely post there. Uh, but thanks, everybody, and we sign off, Tom. <laughs>